Hi everyone. Hi everyone, it's Vicky Jamieson here, streaming in to you from Melbourne, Australia. I hope you're having a lovely evening. Um, I'm just going to check to see if we have anyone on. I'm just going to get on my phone. We've got a glorious 33 degrees here today, so I have got the aircon on. <laughs> and uh, we are just enjoying the sunshine. So I'm in Melbourne. We're out of lockdown, just like you Aucklanders. <laughs> so well done. Congratulations. Um, and I'm going to talk today about my philosophy, my three simple steps on getting your glow, black, go, glow back. <laughs> you can tell it's been a long day um, with your skin. And um, also what that does to you, because your skin's your biggest organ. So usually you find your skin's the last thing to see changes. So what's happening on the inside, the good thing is, you may notice you have a calmer energy, you uh, sleep better, which means you're less tired, <laughs> and your weight um, either stabilizes or you get to your healthy weight, whatever that may look like for you. And then, of course, you have glowing, firm skin. So um, if you jump in here and say hi, I can see there's a couple of you there. Um, hi, Sam. <laughs> I'm on two devices here. <laughs> so jump in and say hi. And um, I'm going to keep going. There's a couple more of you there. So jump in and say hello. I'd love to meet you. Oops, I've got my voice on too. So my three steps to get, also oh, for the, those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a trained beauty therapist, so qualified back in the 90s and also trained as a holistic aromatherapist. So from then on, I, uh, so it was in 1996, I started my salon, which was in Ponsonby in the time when there wasn't very many. I think there was one other beauty salon on Ponsonby Road and I was off um, Crummer Road. So sort of the Greyland end of Ponsonby and it soon turned into a very successful business quite quickly. So what I noticed with myself and also a lot of my clients at the time was burnout, <laughs> which led me down the path of finding different solutions on a holistic level to have more energy. So it's been certainly a journey and I'm going to say these are three simple steps, but they do um, expand. But I want you to just take away the three that keep it simple for today. And once you're integrating one step, then you can add the next step and then you can add the next step. And within each step, there are multiple layers, if you like. So the whole idea is that you have a progression plan, if you like, on as we age, normally what would happen is that from a body perspective, physiologically, things slow down. Now, times have changed. <laughs> we have amazing gene technology now called epigenetics. Um, science is amazing, has come a long way. Plus, we look after ourselves generationally better than a lot of other generations. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> so we are going to live longer than, you know, predecessors. It's on average now the life expectancy for women at the moment is 95. So that's gone up a lot. And men, it's the first time ever in history that the uh, percentage for men to um, that have increased their longevity, if you like, is a smaller percentage difference. So what I mean by that is, it used to be a, quite a, a big comparison, like women were 82 and men were 75. This is on average. Now it's women are 95 and men are 90 or 89 at the moment, but it will go up. So because we're living longer, we also have to look after the inside of our body so that we can, and it sounds really ridiculous, tie our shoelaces, put clothes on the line, carry our shopping bags. So hands up if anyone is watching and you're over 50 because some of those things start to break down pretty quick and you start getting aches and pains. You maybe don't sleep so well. 
uh, your skin starts heading south. Uh, and it's all an internal thing as much as environmental. So skin's a little bit twofold. We have the benefit that we can see it. So what we put on, it matters. But also it's internal and we can't see that. So our internal health is reflected with our skin. So if you want glowing, healthy looking skin, whether you've got lines or not, um, it ref you need to look at that internal side. And looking at longevity is one of those ways. If we can be healthy as we get older, um, you know, my you know, best scenario for dying, <laughs> if you like, if you think about these things, is to go healthy, healthy, bang, dead. <laughs> Not like healthy, healthy, rest home, uh, can't lose my mind, can't walk uh, for 10, 20, 30 years, be a burden on my kids and grandkids. And, you know, so which is potentially an, a problem that we are now facing or the healthcare industry is now facing. So why am I telling you all this? <laughs> what you do today, what depend, irrelevant of what you've done in the past, makes a difference. So it is never too late to start, whether that's looking after your skin or internally looking after yourself, because of course that will benefit your skin. It's never too late. <laughs> never, ever, ever. <laughs> Your whole body can regenerate. All the different cells regenerate at different rates. But as we get older, we want to keep those stimulated and moving forward, if you like, or, or keeping at the pace that they're meant to, or they're programmed to, just like a computer, programmed to regenerate at a certain turnover rate. So here's my three things. Eat, it sounds really simple. Eat, breathe, and eat. Uh, move so they're really easy to remember eat breathe and move and then if I just break that down to explain the concept so when I say eat <laughs> at, from a nutrition background I'm meaning look at your food as fuel so it, while it's great to be emotionally connected to food and that's part of how we digest life uh, and process social interaction. It's also important to go, what energy am I getting from these nutrients that are in my food? So quite often we'll look at, um, what can we eat today? I'm hungry, I'm gonna I need X, Y, Z. So rather than doing that, I find it's easier to start thinking about your food as fuel, and th that way you choose a little bit more differently. It also means that you become aware of nutrients over a diet. So I'm not a big believer in uh, diets, but I am a big believer in healthy eating. And I do believe that you need all three, what we call macros. So proteins, fats, and carbs. You should never go without any of those three food groups because that's how your body gets energy and converts it so that you can move and breathe and all your cells can renew. So from those three, and obviously there's healthy fats and you know saturated fried fats. So we're talking about the good fats, which are your omegas, omega threes and sixes particularly, uh, and then your proteins. So again, protein, you can have too much protein. We wanna keep it lean. Uh, and use the size of the palm of your hand as a guide for how much protein you need. Remember, you're different from the next person who's different from the next person. Your carbohydrates should actually be the most that you get. And this is a little bit out there because at the moment it's really trendy to go no carbs. But what is a carb? And I want to clarify this. So I'm not talking about carbohydrates that we call complex carbohydrates. So French fries, potato chips, these are all carbs though, <laughs> um, pasta, rice. Rice is okay, but quinoa is better, you know, uh, and your frica and some of your ancient grains are better ways to get your grains in than rice. Having said that, I will have rice, I'll have make coconut rice, so there are times and places that you can use it depending on how you want that fuel to work for you the next day. So 
the carbohydrates that you do want to focus on are sweet potato, pumpkin, so your root vegetables. And the best way to have that is that Mediterranean style. So uh, cooking in the oven, like baking or roasting, because you can use olive oil and it softens the skins. So you actually absorb a lot more of the nutrients than say mashing with milk. <laughs> we wanna stay a little bit further away from dairy gluten. And that is still a carbohydrate, so your dairy is also a protein. Uh, but you can have some dairy. So you decide, you will know whether dairy irritates you and it may irritate your gut depending on how your gut's been treated in your early years. Um, that's a topic for another day. But do focus on root vegetables, green vegetables, beans, um, beetroots, all of the multicolored vegetables that you can have as your carbohydrates and salads. So that's the other side other thing. So think of it as things that come out of the ground from a vegetable perspective are a you know half a plate full is what you should be having in the you know in the evening or lunchtime. Don't forget about your lunchtime stuff as well. In the morning times your carbohydrates can be a little bit more complex because they might want to be slow release. So for example soaked oats if you're going to have porridge um, you might have chia pudding, you might have a smoothie, so therefore you can add in a lot more of your greens. You can perhaps have a little bit of fruit to sweeten it up or some dates uh, and put your protein powder in too. So you're making sure you're getting protein first thing in the morning. Uh, snacks should be, you know, your seeds and nuts. You're getting your omegas, your proteins, and they're also carbs. I think they're just a great, easy, quick fix because we're usually in a hurry. Uh, and that's a, that, those are great snacks. Plus, if you want to make bliss balls or um, scrog and mix or something, they're so easy to do in the weekend. So how, do the, how does this help your um, sleeping? So there are, in food, as, as well as nutrients, some of those nutrients trigger different things in our brain. One of which, through our gut, is serotonin. And then the other thing is dopamine. So it makes us feel good when we're having more greens and more vegetables in our diet with a little bit of protein. So if you're having trouble sleeping, you might want to have foods that are higher in magnesium and selenium, like bananas. You might want to have half a protein shake. Those things help to aid all of those things, relax our muscles, uh, and, and they're not heavy on our digestive system. So that can make a really big difference to your energy the following day. So usually think, what am I doing from meal to meal? But also, what have I got on tomorrow? What do I need my energy for? The second philosophy is breathing. So breathing, obviously we're all breathing, otherwise we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so I'm talking about abdominal breathing. So a really good way to do that, and most people will know this right now, but it's doing it makes a big di difference, is putting your hand on your tummy, and when you breathe in, your diaphragm expands. It's like expanding a balloon. So your stomach becomes like pregnant. <laughs> it just bloats out, almost. Then as you breathe out, the stomach comes down. So this actually expands your diaphragm and it's triggering little chemicals in your brain through your nervous system to flip you over from fight or flight, busy, busy, upper breathing, I'm busy, got to do stuff, which is also cortisol releasing, which also breaks down your skin, keeps you awake at night, uh, stops digestion, so you can have a lot more metabolism and digestion issues. Um, and of course, cortisol particularly, or stress, breaks down your collagen, and so your skin will sag and weaken quicker. Now obviously it does it with muscles as well, any kind of connective tissue. So if you're noticing a bit of sagging or loose skin anywhere, sometimes it is just a matter of breathing to flip your system over. So that diaphragm as it expands, it's saying, hi Donna, <laughs> welcome. Uh, that it's saying just go from the fr frenetic 
most of you know what fight or flight is now, to the rest, digest, repair mechanism that we have. Once you are doing that and you have a, a balancing mechanism in your body and it triggers that certain number of times a day and balances itself in because your body's always wanting that balance ultimately, when it's in a nice state of balance, then your body works harder for you, smarter for you, with the regeneration, repairing. You actually get what we call beauty sleep. <laughs> it is actually a real thing. So you get a gro human growth hormone releases between 1 and 3 a.m., but it only releases with certain cycles of sleep. So you have to go through a certain amount of cycles before it will release, otherwise you don't get it. And what that hormone does is it works on your repairing. So particularly good if you want to lose weight or you're struggling with weight because one of the chemicals that it releases is leptin from the, from the brain. So that's part of our fat metabolizing and you know, recognizing when we're full, a lot of satiety um, mechanisms that happen in the brain. So it's really important from the food perspective to get our nutrition right or those nutrients right. So we're actually fueling our brain as well as our body, okay? So our body's doing loads of different things, including hormones, lots of different hormones, not just reproductive hormones. So uh, there's a big interaction happening there. And then the third philosophy is moving, which is, you know, sounds very simple, <laughs> but how does it help with, you know, sleep, having more energy, and you know creating obviously creating healthy weights obvious <laughs> moving gets your whole body uh, internally flowing so if anyone follows Chinese medicine we always talk about yin yang and chi which is your energetic or vital force you also have that physical layer so it's physical mental which is your thoughts and then emotional and they all matter so physically by moving from a physical perspective, what it's doing is obviously um, heart pumping. When you're breathing harder, you're exhaling toxins, but you're also inhaling good um, oxygen, depending on where you are. <laughs> um, so breathing in and breathing out, which also relaxes the nervous system. So very good tip there. Uh, unless you're doing extreme exercise. <laughs> then it also helps to detoxify. So what our body likes is getting in nutrients, using it for energy, and then getting rid of the waste, ready for the next day. It's a bit like putting out the rubbish. So exercise with sweating is one of the ways that we do that. Plus if you notice if your, yes, Tai Chi is brilliant because it's a slow movement. So you actually are doing, you know, an organized flow of movement which helps your lymphatic flow and then it gives you calm energy because it's working on your chi and your meridians uh, and also working on that toxin elimination plus you can still get you know a good sweat up doing that too and you get the social if you're doing it in a group obviously <laughs> you get the social interaction and connection which we need for endorphin release which you get anytime you exercise so how does that work on sleep? Obviously you're physically more tired, but what happens is we get a release of different brain chemicals, all our feel good chemicals in the brain happen. And then what happens is your body's always wanting to balance. So at night time it's going, well, I've had my fill of happy hormones, if you like, or, or good endorphins. And so I'm quite happy to activate the melatonin, which is the chemical you need to sleep because that's the opposite to dopamine and serotonin. And then I'm gonna have a good night's sleep. So you've got the chemical, your body's natural chemicals, plus you're physically tired, um, things have flowed, so you haven't got any toxins holding on that your muscles are wanting to grab hold of or you're not wanting to release from an emotional perspective. So it also kicks in that weight side of things because as things flow, you create a better energy from a, inside the cell area. So um, nutrition in, waste out, and your metabolism gets activated. 
because everything's flowing. If you aren't moving, things get stuck, and then there's no, it's like, oh well, I'll just stay here. <laughs> so there's no reason for it to move on. So you need to give it a reason to move on. Otherwise, particularly as you get older, it just gets like, oh, why should I do that? <laughs> this is the body talking. So it helps with that detoxification. By doing that, your skin glows and it glows health and vibrancy. And that's because there's no toxins on the inside. It's nice and clear. You've got good circulation. The circulation feeds your skin so it turns over quicker. So it usually stays a lot healthier. You don't have so many conditions and it doesn't break down. Again, you need to integrate it with that um, breathe philosophy. That is a big key thing that people know but don't necessarily always do. And it needs to be an everyday thing. And it can be multiple times during the day. And you can just quickly do it for five minutes before you eat. If you're wanting to have a healthy weight, this is a really good way to do it. So you start off in the morning, you might want to do 10 minutes of breathing or meditation. And then during the day, every time you go to eat, you prepare whatever you're going to eat, even if it's a snack, then you sit down. You're not standing rushing. You sit down and you take three deep breaths and then you eat because see how your energy changes if i'm rushing and i'm eating that's a frenetic energy and your digestion's going ah i'm in fight or flight and i haven't got time to digest this right now but so you're having bloating um you know tummy issues things aren't passing through that well you've got um heart you know hypertension you've got indigestion <laughs> you've got heartburn all those things because it's not going in plus you're tired and you're not sleeping well because you're not getting the nutrients out of your food it's just like ah i'm not in absorption mode i'm in i've got to deal with the cortisol thing so hi julie <laughs> So um, that's the part that the breathing makes a difference with the eating and the healthy weight, particularly. The other option is at, at night as well. So do it before eating and then finish off your day. I call it bookending. So start good. Doesn't matter what happens during the day because life happens. Reset every time you eat so that you're eating in a calm state. And then at the end of the day, you can calm as well. It's going to help sleep, it reduces your stress hormones, it's going to get you regenerating more, it's going to get your digestive working better and your elimination process. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Maybe pop, pop in the comments, I can just see a few. Um, oh, your acupuncture a couple of years ago taught you Tai Chi. Oh, it is just so amazing. And that's actually really, there's lots of different holistic modalities that you can use. So I use a um, pressure point technique to work on the nervous system with all my facial clients. Uh, and I have actually got a menopause course, at, which is online, and I teach a lot of um, ancient modalities. And people can integrate whatever works for them. Acupuncture is amazing because you're working on those energy points. So when your energy is stuck, at a certain point, like a railway track gets blocked up if a train breaks down, um, then we need to move it somehow or either trigger it, um, flow it, <laughs> break it down, however it might look depending on the modality. So acupuncture is great. Uh, obviously Tai Chi is wonderful and as is yoga. So both forms of yoga, whether you're doing a more active form, which is great exercise, or whether you're doing yin, which is holding. From an anti-aging perspective, yin yoga is really good because it lengthens your cartilage so and your fascia. So there's a lot of um, research now on how as our fascia, as we age, our fascia, which is the really thin layer that sits on top of your muscles, so it's all very well to stretch your muscles and you notice as you get older, things get tighter. The fascia then sits on top and that's tighter still, like glad wrap, if you like. So by holding a stretch for a long time, that fascia and the, also the cartilage underneath it and then the muscle um, actually just starts to relax. And you can feel it, I call it melting. <laughs> so when I'm doing massage, you can feel it 
a muscle melt as it starts to relax. Equally in yoga, that fascia will start, you know, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, and then it's just not hurting. And it's like, oh, it feels really good. <laughs> so lots of that kind of thing. And of course, your breathing helps with um, anti-aging. So we're not looking at uh, turning back the clock. We're just looking at healthy ways to support our body, um, to stay, you know, vibrant uh, and energetic in a calm way and do all the functioning so that we can have a healthy longevity. So um, that's really good. I'm just reading your comment here, Debbie, on um, something was really helpful with your skin. Yeah, stress makes a big difference with your skin. And it's so the three biggest things for your skin that will break it down prematurely. One is the sun, we pretty much know that. So you must, especially in New Zealand and Australia, wear a sunblock. My philosophy on that is you wear a SPF 15, and then if you're out and about in the sun for longer than your 15 holds for, then you add some more sunblock over the top. Uh, the higher the SPF just means more chemicals. So just keep it to a 15 is what I find from an anti-aging perspective without adding toxicity works the best. So that's your first thing. The second thing is pollution. This is where your nighttime routine is key. You need to cleanse whether you wear makeup or not. And this applies to guys. <laughs> whether you uh, have been exercising perhaps and you feel you're sweaty or not, Wash your face with a cleanser. Now it can be a foaming cleanser if you're a guy. Um, try and do a milky cleanser if you're a woman because your skin will be drier than a guy's. But that gets rid of the pollution. And then go through your, um, your ritual, I call it. Uh, your skincare ritual. And what happens is by smelling the products, whatever you're using, you usually like the smell, otherwise you wouldn't have bought it. Uh, it's triggering brain chemicals and it's actually getting your brain ready to sleep so it's working on those chemicals so really enjoy the process smell things and go slowly don't rush through it <laughs> oh i just got to get a bed and that's activating your breathing and you have um, less stress more growth hormone more repair more regeneration more more fat metabolism <laughs> you can just stay nice and healthy uh, and then the third thing is stress so all those things and nutrients make a big difference to stress too because the more you're stressed, the more nutrients or vitamins that you need and antioxidants. So the more stressed your body is, whether that's mentally, emotionally or physically, you run through your um, vitamin Bs, you run through zinc, magnesium, um, and, and you need to buffer the extra free radical damage that's happening on the inside. All that inflammation that's created, um, you know, makes everything break down. It's basically ripping things down. It can cause pain and obviously dis-ease. So that's where stress is a really key thing that gets undervalued. So if you address stress, um, there's lots of other ways. I might talk next month on ways to eradicate free radical damage which is all the inflammation in your body there's new research out now and it's really trending in anti-aging um, industry so uh, but for now focus on those three things eat breathe and move <laughs> enjoy your night guys see ya